Hey guys, my name is Kadros, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Nocnaria. These are newest welfare to the game, added with the summer event currently going on on JP. She is an AoE arts foreigner, and that's quite an interesting welfare to get, as again, we don't necessarily get a whole lot of these extra welfares, so certainly she's going to be useful whenever you do need a foreigner, a foreigner to they farm things she is decently loopable as well and you guys can already get a copy of her pretty quickly in the event now again just to sort of start out with in terms of overall considerations as a welfare we don't care about banners or anything like that so there's no sort of availability issue other than if you miss the event thankfully with the evocation festival being the way it is already on jp we're reasonably sure that every welfare will eventually come back if not uh again right away so certainly I think the bigger concern is missing out on the other intangibles in the event like craft essences which at least JP does appear to be bringing back as well now and potentially like command codes and other things. So otherwise I'm going to say as long as you guys do the event as long as you complete it you should be able to complete your Nocturne and that'll be a thing for you. Now with regards to her attack power let's go ahead and dive in here on her stats. You can see she already has 9.2k attack. This is perfectly fine. This is A-OK -okay in my book. As again, I like to see four stars basically in that 9 to 10K range, as that means they have fairly decent attack. Lower than 9K, I start to begin to have concerns. As long as they're not low into the 8K range, we should be good. And then again, HP value here, she has about 12.5K. Again, I do think this is going to be a concern, but not too bad, as again, it is a relatively average number there. Her attribute here is going to be Earth Attribute. She's got 148 Star Absorption, which is pretty average again for our foreigners here. You can kind of expect them to be a little bit somewhat like archers in terms of their Star Absorption. And again, Star Generation right here at 14.8. She only has a 0.41 NP Charge Attack, which seems low. But again, if you guys watch my Castoria Berserker Analysis video, you should know this is... Not going to be that concerning in the grand scheme of things. Nowadays, we have pretty much charge out the ass, so we have any number of ways to be able to get someone to actually full refund. So don't worry about it too much with regards to this. Her NP charge defense here is 3%. She has a death rate that is abnormally low at 5.7%. That's certainly a good thing for her to have. And then she is chaotic evil. Her gender is female, her traits are fey, humanoid, sovereign, obstacle maker, servant, summer mode servant, and weak to enema elish. Now with regards to her deck here, you can see she is a triple arts deck. It actually feels like it's been a hot second since we've seen a triple arts deck. The devs do not give them out too much here, so that is certainly nice to see as that's going to help her out a lot as an arts unit. And you're going to want that triple arts chain for a couple of reasons. So really good that they did give it to her. Obviously, this can be paired with her NP for a triple arts chain. That so makes it a little bit easier. But given the fact that you have three cards, it's going to be even easier to find that triple arts somewhere in the deck for being able to charge her up if you are in a carding type of situation. Her hit counts here are all average or above in the case of the force hit buster. Otherwise, again, nothing too much to write home about. We don't have uh, writing or anything affecting the quick card. So basically, it's just solid performance of the arts card. Though again, as we can as we can denote here, the NP charge attack right here is rather low. <clears throat> so, with regards to her first skill. She has debuff immunity one time, three turns. It's just for herself. So again, this is going to come into play as debuffs are a big part of her kit. But don't worry too much about that. At least she has it and it is a nice thing. She recovers her own HP every turn for three turns. Again, up to a thousand right here. So nothing too strong, but nothing bad either in that regard as having healing rather than not having healing. It's always going to be better to have it. She charges her own MP gauge every turn for three turns of up to 20%. So this is going to mean you're going to want to lower this skill for that nice even 20% cut, getting the most that you can. But you'll see there's another consideration in that regard. Still, I'm going to tell you guys that this is going to be some, somewhat useful and helpful to her in terms of her looping capability. And then you can see that she charges the MP gauge of any allies with the fair with the My Fair Soldier status. 
which is a unique skill seal uh, debuff that may, sorry, Nocnaria can apply on her allies. So that'll come into play here as we look at the next next skill. But again, this one also does scale. So you're pretty, pretty much going to want to lure this skill. Again, her cooldown here is only six turns, so nothing too bad there. <clears throat> With her second skill here, you guys can see she gets party NP damage for three turns. That is nice, just at 20% there. But then she's also going to grant the party My Fair Soldier debuff, except for herself, for three turns. That is a demerit. It will seal their skill. So it's just a unique skill seal type of variant. <clears throat> and you guys can see that what it does is whenever they have the My Fair Soldier status, they will gain attack up and defense up. So the rest of the party will gain that for three turns. Mabe herself will not gain this. So that is the downside. But the My Fair Soldier attack buff is fairly strong here at 50%, and the defense buff is fairly strong at 30%. So you're going to have to be very careful with how you utilize this. Obviously, things can get in the way, <laughs> in the way of it, and you can actually see that basically here, Fandom has some notes, but honestly, they kind of make things confusing, so I'm going to try to talk about it with you guys here. <clears throat> so, it says, basically, when conditional buffs will be applied to the party upon use of the skill, there is no My Fair Soldier check upon cast. In other words, it's not going to, to somehow check to see whether or not you have it when you cast it. It's more like it's just going to cast it and put it on you. And then that is going to give the My Fair Soldier buffs regardless. However, it then says if the target does not meet the My Fair Soldier status condition, the buff will be displayed as inactive, indicated by a faded buff icon. So what this means is that if you cleanse, if you get rid of it, if you block it, if you, uh, again, do anything like resist it, obviously then you're going to see that these buffs will still apply however they will not be activated they will be grayed out for you so that's going to be one of the issues that you're going to run into and this is going to be particularly concerning given a certain someone that we have probably supporting me sorry knock naria again so with regards to the third status, you can see that as these buffs become active, depending on the My Fair Soldier status within their turn duration, even after the actual skill was used. I can't really think of a scenario where this would be the case unless it's, uh, and again, I have not actually looked, unless it's part of her bond C or something. But otherwise, I'm going to say that this is one of those cases where it should not become active during the turn, short of her just applying the buff again or something like that, which can be the case. The My Fair Soldier debuff can be prevented by debuff resistance or debuff immunity. So this is something you guys are going to have to watch out for. Because it's a debuff, it can be resisted. And that's something you really need to pay attention to because you're going to be using it on servants. This isn't you using it on some trash NPC that's fighting alongside of you. This is going to be on servants that actually have magic resistance. And again, as you can see, debuff resistance and debuff immunity as well will prevent this from landing. So certainly not something you're going to want to have happen, given the fact that it is a really nice thing. The problem that we haven't stated about all of this is that this is a skill seal that you're putting on your allies. If you're going to use any allies with Mabe, with Nocnaria, make sure that you actually have popped their skills before utilizing this, because it is a three turn skill seal. You're not going to want to use Castoria's uh, stuff after the fact because it'll just be blocked by the skill seal itself. So certainly the timing here is going to matter. Particularly if you know that someone has a skill that they're not going to be able to pop until the next turn. At that point, you may wish to forego activating this on the first turn. Give yourself a chance to kind of utilize this be able to pop the other unit skills and then be able to pop this in order to help them out. Keep in mind too, that you're going to want to pop this skill first and foremost for Nocnaria. The reason why is because this first skill, as you guys come back to it, grants 30% charge for anyone with this debuff. You're not going to want to have some sort of scenario where oh, you've cleansed the party and now they don't get this. Or you've debuff immune the party and now they don't get this. 
So essentially, everything is conditional upon having the My Fair Soldier status. So just make sure you're playing it safe. It's going to make Nocturia somewhat difficult to use on a first run. Once you get the hang of the button presses and when to pop what, you'll be fine. But that first run is going to be a little hairy as you're going to have to get the timing right of activating certain skills. Particularly if you're dependent on certain skills for refund or charge. That can definitely be a concern with you. So, that's the issue at play with these first two skills. They're very interesting nonetheless. And then with the third skill here, you guys can see that she gets the ability to increase her own arcs performance for three turns by 20%. Not a very solid steroid, it's not a lot, but it's something. It's also going to have a chance to stun all enemies for one turn, up to 60%. The problem with this being 60% is you can't really rely on it, so it might bail you out of a bad situation, but don't expect it to, because it'll always fail right when you need it to actually land the most. It's not going to reduce all enemies' defense for three turns by 20%, and that is certainly a nice thing. However, the problem you're going to have here is this last effect. So this has a 500% chance to seal the party's arts cards except herself and Artoria caster allies for one turn. So, with regards to her, this is just going to be, again, OG Artoria caster and Artoria caster berserker that we've talked about here. So anyone other than them is going to get their arts cards basically sealed you cannot use them selecting them will result in a chain error good luck so that's the problem you're going to run into if you actually need to card or you're trying to form a triple arts chain with anyone else's cards that is not named castoria this is going to mean that she is hard locked to castoria for most of your comps as you're really just not going to want to carry this demerit around for anyone else however there's another consideration here, and that's going to be, what do you do if you are in sort of a challenge scenario where maybe you're trying to take someone like Lady Avalon or something? Well, you're going to be pretty much sealed. So just try to make sure if you're going to pop this, that you either pop this on a turn where that other unit doesn't have arts cards present, or try to pop it on a turn where it's not going to matter because you're utilizing, say, like, you know, a Castoria NP and Nocnaria's NP and then Nocnaria's Arts card or something like that. In a, in a sense, a turn where you might be busy doing things otherwise or you might not care about forming a triple arch chain. As long as that's the case, this demerit is fine. However, it is going to be a very nasty demerit you have to work your way around. This is sort of why I say sometimes the demerits are not very fun. This is a very strategic one, one that I think is going to cause people a lot of problems, but as long as you're careful about when you pop these skills, you should be okay. That's going to be the big problem with Nocnaria, is knowing when to use what. So again, also on a six turn cooldown here. Just have Magic Resistance A here for 20% debuff resistance. She does have Melty Heart A, as again, you're going to be able to increase the party's critical star generation rate by 20% while herself is on the field. That's a really nice thing. Don't pay attention to the including sub-members, because... We don't care. If Nocnaria is not on the field, you're not getting this buff. And if the unit is in the back line, they're not generating stars for you. So it doesn't matter either way. I'm not really sure why Fandom decided to put this one in here, because it's a really weird note. But again, it is what it is. And then she gets Southern Star EX here, which gains four critical stars every turn and then charge her own MP gauge every turn by four. So now you guys can see, not only is she going to get the 20% charge per turn from her skill, she's also going to get four from a passive, giving her 24% every turn just naturally until that skill wears off. Really a nice sort of extra little bit to help out her refund. With regards to her pen skills, yeah, you're pretty much going to want mana loading first. This is an arts AoE looper. We know we're going to want as much charge as we can get. It may facilitate us getting away with better CEs or support loadouts. So in general, always go with mana loading first on an arts looper. It tends to be the best choice. Her third one here is anti-lancer attack damage aptitude. We don't care about that. So as a result, your second one is going to be going after the extra attack finesse. That is going to be your best, your second best use of the coins. 
And then the third one here is the Lancer is just not going to be that useful, but hey, it's there if you so choose. Again, you should be getting coins from the actual event since this is a welfare, so you should have plenty to unlock everything. Just keep in mind, if you do plan on grailing her, skip the third skill for now because it's the least useful as they give you enough coins in order to complete everything, but it's completing everything assuming you bond 15 the unit. So just keep that in the back of your head. That, that does include a calculation based off bond coins. Her Noble Phantasm is a four hit AOE. Again, it is arts, so it definitely has good regen for that. But keep in mind the fact that it's only four hits is not going to be that stellar. You're not going to be generating that much, especially since she only has a, a 0.4 uh, MP gain rate there. So she will deal damage to all enemies. She will also remove her own debuffs. Thankfully, this is not a party-wide cleanse, as we already talked about. Having, say, Castoria's MP in the mix there could cause problems with the My Fair Soldier buff, as it will cleanse and remove things. But at least with this only cleansing her own debuffs, we don't have to care about this. And then, again, her overcharge effect is going to heal her by 5,000. So this is where she is actually going to be quite a bit of a survival machine. She doesn't have any hard survival in her kit, but she definitely ends up having some good healing capability. Sadly, it's only her own, so you're not tending to like the Castorias to help keep them alive. But, hey, it is what it is. So I could definitely see a scenario, though, where you could set up Nocnaria with something like the Maiden Halloween CE in order to be able to solo things by looping her NP with a triple arch chain constantly and just keep healing herself. As long as you had the ability to soak the damage, you would be fine. But if you didn't, that would be the concern is a powerful NP killing you off. So again, definitely a nice thing to have there. Now, with regards to her damage output, keep in mind, we're going to be looking at the NP damage list. I have it sorted by AoE so that it's filtered all the single targets out. These are neutral numbers, and with our foreigners, remember, we're probably going to be taking them up against Berserkers most of the time, so they should be effective. Or again, against something like a Pretender, where they're actually in their niche. <clears throat> but just keep in mind that you're not going to get a whole lot of extra firepower uh, on this sheet shown, because it is a neutral number. It is not including external support buffs. And it's not including things like Mystic Codes or Craft Essences or Command Codes. So, as we look at this, obviously, sometimes this sheet sort of belies the truth as it's only a unit self-skills. So, for instance, a unit like Kukulkan that actually hits insanely hard and scales really hard, particularly due to the conditions of their kit, not necessarily showing us strong here for the raw number where it's not including all those conditionals. Similarly, you have units like Abby Summer, who definitely show high on the list, but this is because they're utilizing all of their debuffs on the same target when they're actually a little bit more of an AoE. So they're going to do 38k to one unit, but not to the rest of the units, as they're pretty much just going to do splash damage to them. So, like I said, some of the time, sometimes this uh, does sort of wiggle around some. What I do think is interesting here is comparing... Basically, these bottom two to Nocnaria. So right here, we have Mysterious Idol X, our other welfare AoE foreigner. Definitely not one known particularly for her looping prowess, as she doesn't really have charge in her kit. She's not really got a lot of NP generation. She can be made to three turn, but it's not the prettiest thing ever. So again, a lot of people just use her for a like NP damage stat stick to take out a wave, maybe up against the mechanical enemy, something that her niche can actually come into play. But she is welfare, so you are guaranteed to get all five copies of her at 33k there. Now, compared against someone like Hokusai, Hokusai is only showing at 18. But Hokusai has always been a very conditional unit herself. As again, you guys can see, she does have Nom de Plume here to get her up to 38k. Man attribute can get her to about 27k. I'm sorry, it's cut off there a little bit. And again, sort of having Nom de Plume, uh, or sorry, no, here's Nom de Plume. Here was Nom de Plume with the man trait right here. So essentially both in play. Her Nom de Plume skill is her third skill that allows her to stack basically defense down by hitting enemies with an arts card. It is nice. It definitely allows her to amp damage. 
So she could certainly do some solid numbers when it's both man and you've landed those arts cards previously. But realistically, you're gonna be looking at probably just man trait most of the time there at that 27K number. So don't worry about it too much. However, if you are a big Hokusai fan, this should be concerning for you. As again, Noknaria is down here all the way at the bottom at only 18K. But Noknaria is a welfare. So we're actually looking at this 30K in P5 number. She doesn't have any conditionals to be able to squeeze more out of her damage. But again, at 30K, she's actually pretty solid. That would bring her in functionally right behind Abby Summer. Again, obviously someone like Kukulkan is actually a little bit higher. Someone like maybe Koyanskaya in her niches can be a little bit higher as well. But yes, this does mean that Nocturia should be a very solid AoE welfare. And she can loop in just double Castoria setups against neutral enemies with only a single hit of overkill against three enemies. So that would mean that she did kill the wave. She did kill everyone there. She would be looking at something like 82% refund. And that is including her 24% guaranteed. So yes, you would need a little bit extra there. You might be looking at something like using a fragment of 2004 to push her over the edge, using something like our new arts mystic code, or again, trying to do something like plug suit, gain access to a third support so that you would have enough. But obviously this certainly depends on sort of how much overkill we're able to get, how much refund we can possibly generate, and sort of our order of operations in terms of popping our skills. So, as long as you can, again, have enough support there for Nocturia, yes, she can be a solid arts looper for you, even as a welfare. I already mentioned the Maiden Halloween craft essence that you guys are going to be actually able to get coming up here on NA during our Halloween event. It's a very, very solid self-healing boost by 75% craft essence. Really good for solos. But other than that, Obviously, craft essences that you're probably going to want to use, something like Black Grail, as she can start from zero. It's going to help her secure a lot of those overkill hits, but not going to help her out actually in terms of refund numbers otherwise. Still, just our best overall damage dealing craft essence from when starting from zero and in peeing. Something like Ocean Flyer might also be of your interest, especially if you're going up against sort of a non-three set enemy wave somewhere in the node, as this is going to give her starting charge. This one's a welfare from our upcoming Summer 6 here on NA. Those of you on JP have already had this, but certainly this one could also be another really decent solution for her, for giving her both arts up NP damage that can scale with someone like Oberon, and again, just starting charge to make the looping a little bit easier. If you still want to look at another welfare option for starting from zero, Royal Icing has always been a good one. It's also all attack scaling. This one comes from our Oniland Halloween event. It's not going to be available during our Halloween event this year on NA. <clears throat> but you do get arts performance and NP damage from it. And then Sign of a Smiling Face came from a New Year's event shortly thereafter. This one's also another really solid one as it's just all sorts of really good combinations of things. It is all attack scaling here and still manages to give arts NP gen and NP damage all on a single thing. So basically everything that an arts looper would want. There's also knowing the way broadly if you want ignore invincibility and NP damage and NP generation rate to help out that NP refund a little bit more. Or again, something like Honey Lake, should you so choose to go after something like say the burn damage augmentation. So Honey Lake's another really solid one, but hard to get your hands on. And then again, for those of you that maybe haven't managed to grab a uh, Black Grail or maybe even any of these others, there's always still Infant of Atlas, aka Child of Atlas here on NA, that does give anti-Berserker power mod to your attacks. So it can be useful for not only carding, but also in P damage, and it will allow you to ignore defense. The only issue with this one is going to be that it is split stat. So probably not the best term in terms of an investment option for you, but could work in a pinch. So again, let me know what you guys think about Noctinaria below. I will be sure to read your comments and I will see you guys for the next one. Have a good one.